What is the funniest, real-life story you can tell? One day in college, the teacher had stapled answer sheets to the back of every test by mistake. A few minutes after passing the tests around, his phone rang and he stepped out. Everyone had noticed the answer sheet, and we decided that we would all use it and tear it off after. Hopefully he would never notice. So I checked each of the answers and they were all correct except for the last one. We were to draw a flow chart for a process. I checked the answer sheet, answers will vary. I drew my flow chart, tore off the answer sheet and walked to the front podium to turn the test in. When I got to the podium I had to know. I needed to see what everyone else had drawn for their flow chart. Answers will vary. Everyone had written that on their tests. I don't remember what the teacher did about it. High school, junior year. First day of class. Teacher walks in, it's an older wrinkly guy with a statue. A little weird looking. His shirt is only tucked in on one side. Everyone is just getting the wrong vibe from this guy. Like, he's not all there in the head. He's got a manic look in his eyes. He's creepy. He starts going through attendance, not looking up the whole time. Then he gets to my name. Starts to say it, then stops. Looks up, scans the room, looks directly at me. Ah, Mr. 102194, I'm glad you're here. How's your family? Is your little sister still playing the piano? Is that model ship still on your dresser? Is your room still blue? I'm shocked, mortified. I can't find the words to respond. This creeper has just described my family and the fucking room I sleep in at night. Ah, of course it is. It's only been what? A week? Then he goes back to attendance. Panics were had that day. But anyway, the next day I find out the old crazy guy is my uncle's best friend, and they and my dad decided to pull a prank on me for my first day. The teacher wasn't so crazy looking the rest of the year, he shaved the pedo stash, which he grew specifically for the prank, apparently, dressed better, stopped making his eye twitch, etc. I have to admit, it was a good prank, even if I was terrified of being murdered for a day or two. I am an American in China and I arranged a meeting with a guy from Germany. I go to his hotel. He says, I'm coming down in the elevator. The elevator opens and the only western face I see is a guy looking for me, or so I thought. He introduces himself with a thick accent. We talked for half an hour before we both figured out that we were supposed to be meeting other business persons. And, yep, there they were in the elevator area waiting for us, another American and a German. Go figure. High school, junior year. First day of class. Teacher walks in, it's an older wrinkly guy with a statch. A little weird looking. His shirt is only tucked in on one side. Everyone is just getting the wrong vibe from this guy. Like, he's not all there in the head. He's got a manic look in his eyes. He's creepy. He starts going through attendance, not looking up the whole time. Then he gets to my name. Starts to say it, then stops. Looks up, scans the room, looks directly at me. Ah, Mr. 102194, I'm glad you're here. How's your family? Is your little sister still playing the piano? Is that model ship still on your dresser? Is your room still blue? I'm shocked, mortified. I can't find the words to respond, this creeper has just described my family, and the fucking room I sleep in at night. Ah, of course it is, it's only been what? A week? Then he goes back to attendance. Panics were had that day. But anyway, the next day I find out the old crazy guy is my uncle's best friend, and they and my dad decided to pull a prank on me for my first day. The teacher wasn't so crazy looking the rest of the year, he shaved the pedo stash, which he grew specifically for the prank, apparently, dressed better, stopped making his eye twitch, etc. I have to admit, it was a good prank, even if I was terrified of being murdered for a day or two. My ex-boyfriend's mom had her eye makeup tattooed on, and sent her kids, who lived with her at the time, to the store for a couple of things. It wasn't until my ex and his brother were in the checkout line, receiving funny looks from a clerk, that he realized that they were two lone men buying nothing but cucumbers and Vaseline, which his mom wanted to soothe the swelling from her eyes. My ex panics and blurts out, no, it's okay, he's my brother, while gesturing to his brother. They received major faces. He just stopped talking, figured there was nothing he could do to salvage the situation, and just accepted the judgment. One time, in college, my buddies and I were out at the bars, one of my friends successfully picked up a co-ed and brought her back to the house. It was late in the spring and was hot, and the old house we were in didn't have a sea. When this happened, we usually slept on couches and hammocks that were out on the front porch. A few of us were out there for a while, when one of my buddies got the genius idea to climb on the roof of the front porch to spy on our other buddy getting some. 
He couldn't make it up by himself, so I boosted him, tried to follow him up there couldn't make it, and fell back to sleep on a couch. Next thing I know, there are five cop cars out on the street out front shining their spotlights at the porch roof. My buddy had passed out with his head resting on the windowsill, and the neighbors had called the cops. Now remember, it was hot outside, so he was just in his boxers. He eventually got down and explained the situation, but ended up getting arrested anyways because his dumbass gave a fake name for some unknown reason. As he was getting put in the back of the car, he was asking the female officer arresting him what time she got off work. The next day we went to bail him out, but the cop said one of us had to blow triple zeros. I made the attempt, successfully got the triple zeros, and the cop gave me a high five, and my buddy came out in paper pants. TLDR, buddy spied on other buddy, passed out, cops called for peeping Tom, buddy arrested for false name. Bailed out by blowing triple zeros, received high five from cop. Necessary setup fact number one, there is a town called Temple in Texas. Necessary setup fact number two, I have a very Jewish surname, but was raised Catholic. I know very little about Judaism, and rarely even consider the fact that most people assume I'm Jewish when they meet me. Now the story, which probably won't seem as funny since I just had to explain all that first. My wife and I were at a party in Houston and mentioned to someone that we'd just moved to Austin. One of the questions we were asked was have you been to Temple yet? They meant, of course, a synagogue. My response was we drove through one time, but we didn't stop. Bonus story, one time, I happened to be walking out of work at the same time as my boss boss. He asked me are you doing anything for Yom Kippur? My answer was no, but tell him to call me and I'll do whatever I can to help him out. Ooh, ooh, I have one for this. I had a flock of chickens, and something kept getting at them during the night. It would only take one bird, no remains, so I assumed it was a fox. My family went on vacation, so I decided to stay up in the barn for the night to see if I could catch what was getting them. That night every chicken roost for the evening in the bushes around our house. It was as if they knew I was going to catch the thing so they helped me out by letting me sleep in the house. I lay on the porch in a sleeping bag with an old lady blue plaid nightgown and a mag light in my hand. About 1 am I hear a squawking sound. I jump up with the flashlight, run outside, and see something smallish with a hen in its mouth. It runs to the tree lean and I follow it, cursing the whole way. It drops the hen, which is dead, and as I point the flashlight into the trees I see it as a youngish raccoon. I pick up the chicken, start shaking it at the raccoon, still cursing. I then think, I am going to shoot this bee right here and now. So I run back to the house, still holding the chicken and the flashlight, and look for a gun. The only thing I can find which is loaded is a semi-automatic paintball gun. I set the chicken on the counter, grab the gun, and run back outside. After finding the raccoon with the flashlight, still sitting up in the tree, I drop the light and open fire. Splattering the whole tree, raccoon and all, with hot pink paintballs I am screaming take that you goddamn mf, that'll teach you to eat my f chickens. Mind you it is 1am. I have neighbors. My rage finally quelled, I put down the gun and pick up the flashlight. All I can see of the tree are pink branches, no raccoon in sight. So I get a rocking chair, set it out in the driveway, and sit watch. At some point one of the hens started slipping on a trash can lid she was perched on, so I picked her up and put her on my lap. I stayed that way, sitting in a rocking chair in my blue plaid nightgown in my driveway with a paintball gun and a mag light, a hen on my lap, for the rest of the night. The little F never came back. A friend of mine has the ultimate real life story with a girl that was blackout drunk. He was bartending, and Chippendale strippers came to town. The bar had hired several of the college football players to bar back. Anyway, there was a group of girls at a table that had been drinking pretty heavily, and one of the girls, upon ordering, said it was their friend's 21st birthday. So he sent one of the football players with free shots to the table. The football player came back and said the birthday girl wants him to bring the drinks to their table. So he delivered them, and she was all excited. Fast forward to closing time, the birthday girl's friend tells him that birthday girl wants him to take her home. Yeah, sure, no problem, he needed to just finish up closing. So then he is taking her back to her apartment. She is friggin ripped. She says this is her apartment. He begins to try every key on the keychain, and none worked. He asks again, are you sure this is your apartment? Drunkenly, she says, yes, just kick in the door. Well, being horny, he does. Upon walking in, he smells new leather. He asks, did you just get new couches? She replies, no. By this time, she is all over him. Clothes are flying, and he starts banging her on the couch. After a while, he feels something warm and thinks to himself, yeah, this girl just got hers. So after he finishes, he gets up and goes to the bathroom. This is where things begin getting good. 
Upon turning on the lights in the bathroom, he discovers exactly what that one she let out was. She had shit herself during coitus. Well, he just went ahead and got in the shower and cleaned up. Then he is looking for a towel and can't find one, so he walks into the kitchen and sees a kitchen towel and dries himself the best he can with a kitchen towel. Then he sees a picture on the counter of a black couple. Oh shit, he had broken into, apparently, a black couple that was in the process of moving into their new apartment. So he promptly put on his clothes and told her, I had fun, but she was already passed out. Well, fast forward a couple of days, and the police are leaving his bar as he is arriving to get ready for his shift. The manager says, what happened with you and the drunk birthday girl? He said, took her home, banged her, and then left. The manager tells him, well, she hasn't been in contact with her parents in a couple of days, and they are worried. He is thinking, oh shit. Well, fast forward a couple of days, and the police are leaving his bar as he is arriving to get ready for his shift. The manager says, what happened with you and the drunk birthday girl? He said, took her home, banged her, and then left. The manager tells him, well, she hasn't been in contact with her parents in a couple of days, and they are worried. He is thinking, oh shit. Well, a couple of weeks go by, and he is out at a different club and thinks he sees her across the dance floor. She then makes eye contact with him and promptly covers her face and runs out of the club. TLDR my buddy actually F-ed the S out of a girl and may have committed a hate crime by accident. I was with a friend one night, pretty hammered playing video games with him, also hammered, but he was on probation and wasn't allowed to drink. We had gone through many beers, and his parents came in to check on us because it was late and we were being noisy. One thing led to another, they found out, and instantly went berserk. Since I don't like dealing with berserk parents and he was upstairs arguing with them, I had no way out except for the window. I decided to bail, climbed out the window, and started walking toward the bus stop. I made it to the bus stop around 11.45 p.m., but no bus had arrived yet, and most buses don't run past 1 a.m. I decided to stay at my girlfriend's for the night because it was closer, and two buses still ran to get me there, so I departed on the first bus. I arrived halfway to my girlfriend's house, but when I got there, I realized the next bus didn't come until 12.45, and it was only 12 o'clock. It was also cold as balls out there, middle of winter in Alberta. So, I did what any reasonable person would do at 12 a.m., I went up to the nearest apartment building, rang every single buzzer, and told them my aunt Sylvia lived on the third floor, and I couldn't remember her apartment number. After a little commotion, I made my way up the stairwell to floor number three, laid down, and looked at Reddit to pass some time. I woke up two hours later to a conversation I heard in the apartment next to me, keywords, hobo, sleeping, hallway. So, I thought, OS, they called the cops. What time is it? I gotta get the F out of here. I ran down the stairs and out the back exit. As I came around the building, still totally hammered, I saw a cop car pull up, and they didn't look at me twice, I was an innocent looking 17 year old. As soon as they came out of the building, I asked them if they were heading toward the west end because I missed the last bus. They said, yeah, we came from over there. Do you need a ride? So I said, yes, I do. After riding in the back of their car for 15 minutes, they arrived at the station, and I departed on my way to my girlfriend's, making it there safe and sound. TLDR, drunk me misses the last bus because I fell asleep in a random apartment complex and had the cops called on me for being a homeless guy sleeping in the building. I got out of the building and caught a ride home with the cops that came to arrest me. TLDR, girl punched me in the face. I punched her back. Worst first date ever. Bonus points, I didn't know it was a first date. So I'm in college, early sophomore year, in some psychology 101 class. This cute Hispanic girl, Maria, sits next to me and we hit it off. To be completely honest, I wasn't really into her as a romantic interest at the time, but she was pretty cool and in hindsight, I wouldn't have minded dating her. She was a commuter student, so we didn't really hang out much outside of class. One weekend, she had a group project on campus, so she asked if I wanted to hang out after she was finished around 5pm on Saturday. Incidentally, that's about the time that I went to the gym to practice MMA. She knows that I dabble in the martial arts, and when I bring up the conflict, which I had no problem skipping, she suggested she come with. This was also prefaced with an O, but I'll be all sweaty after. No problem, I'll just shower at your dorm. Face, meet Pong. Fast forward to Saturday. We show up at MMA. Since it's a college-run club, and a tech school, to boot, we have a wide variety of Dedebros there ranging from experienced fighters to complete newbies. This meant that Maria wasn't really out of place, and we spent some time going over the basics. Our practices were usually 1.5-2 hours long, and we would drill for the first half and then spar for the second. 
since I'm probably the smallest guy there, 5 foot 3, 125 pounds, and since Maria was my guest, the sparring portion was all me. Now, real talk here, sparring with women is a lose-lose situation. Call it sexism, but even if she says she can handle it I can't just go balls to the walls. Especially with a new bee. If I come out blazing, someone is going to get hurt. Spoiler alert, it won't be me. But, at the same time, I can't lose. Call it pride or misplaced misogyny, consider my privilege checked, but if I lose then it's GG. I won't hear the end of it ever again. So when fighting with a woman, I usually take a few lumps and give a few love taps. I'll go hard enough to make it clear that I'm dominant, but not hard enough to actually cause damage. The fight starts and Maria comes out swinging. That's fine, I'll just twirl a bit and throw away suddenly I'm spinning. Turns out she's done some boxing before. Like five years worth. Just after my husband and I started dating, we were at my house watching a movie. I didn't have a couch, so we were sitting on the floor. About halfway through, out of the corner of my eye, I notice him shifting subtly. He was obviously uncomfortable and equally obviously not wanting me to notice. After being offered a cushion to sit on, he says, no, nothing's wrong. I'm fine. It struck me as so ridiculous that he would sit there uncomfortable that I got a little tickled. Not giving it much thought, I reached over and patted, whacked, his thigh four or five good times, saying, well that's okay, then. So, his leg was asleep and it was waking up so he was full on pins and needles. He laughed, screamed, and farted all at the same time. It was glorious and I was wailing with laughter. So now I tell people that he knew I'm evil when he married me. Unfortunately, it did break the passing gas in front of her barrier, which was never to return. It was so worth it, though. This is one of my family's favorite stories. The Phantom Pooper. In the late 70s my aunt and uncle worked for the forest service in Dinosaur, Colorado, managing a fire lookout. They lived in a compound with all the other forest service employees. Imagine the Dharma Initiative. Anyway, one day my aunt, imagine the nicest, sweetest lady ever, we call her Gidget because of Sally Field, just like that. She is the eternal optimist and will laugh until she's crying at anything, especially when she tells this story, was playing with my then toddler aged cousin on the swing set and noticed a funny smell. After a brief time investigating, she found that someone had S on one of the swings. She figured someone got a little drunk and just dropped tea and let loose in a childish attempt to be funny. So, a couple of weeks go by and on the doorstep of the visitor center was another pile of S, bigger in diameter than the last, on the swing seat. So this time, she decided to clean it up and investigate. No one fessed up. Then the real funny happened. A couple of weeks after that, the monster appeared. She went into the communal laundry facility and noticed on the open dryer door that someone had taken another S on the dryer. But this monster was ungodly huge. Still needing to do the family laundry, she took action. She grabbed the paper plate and a spatula and returned to the scene of the crime. She scooped the poop onto the plate and headed to the nearest toilet. Realizing it was too big to be flushed, she decided on her next course of action, fecal dissection. She had to go acquire a butter knife to be able to chop the poop into flushable sections. After doing so, she then sat there for the next few minutes dropping flushable sizes of someone else's S into the toilet. She then sanitized the dryer door and went about her business. To this day, 30 plus years later, no one knows who the perpetrator was. And that is my family's story of the phantom pooper. TLDR aunt cut up someone else's S with a butter knife. TLDR, girl punched me in the face. I punched her back. Worst first date ever. Bonus points, I didn't know it was a first date. So I'm in college, early sophomore year, and some psychology 101 class. This cute Hispanic girl, Maria, sits next to me and we hit it off. To be completely honest, I wasn't really into her as a romantic interest at the time, but she was pretty cool and in hindsight I wouldn't have minded dating her. She was a commuter student, so we didn't really hang out much outside of class. One weekend, she had a group project on campus, so she asked if I wanted to hang out after she was finished around 5pm on Saturday. Incidentally, that's about the time that I went to the gym to practice MMA. She knows that I dabble in the martial arts, and when I bring up the conflict, which I had no problem skipping, she suggested she come with. This was also prefaced with oh, but I'll be all sweaty after. No problem, I'll just shower at your dorm. Face, meet Palm. Fast forward to Saturday. We show up at MMA. Since it's a college-run club, at a tech school, to boot, we have a wide variety of the bros there ranging from experienced fighters to complete newbies. This meant that Maria wasn't really out of place, and we spent some time going over the basics. Our practices were usually 1.5-2 hours long, and we would drill for the first half and then spar for the second. 
since I'm probably the smallest guy there. 5 foot 3, 125 pounds. And since Maria was my guest, the sparring portion was all me. Now, real talk here, sparring with women is a lose-lose situation. Call it sexism, but even if she says she can handle it I can't just go balls to the walls. Especially with a new bee. If I come out blazing, someone is going to get hurt. Spoiler alert, it won't be me. But, at the same time, I can't lose. Call it pride or misplaced misogyny, consider my privilege checked, but if I lose then it's GG. I won't hear the end of it ever again. So when fighting with a woman, I usually take a few lumps and give a few love taps. I'll go hard enough to make it clear that I'm dominant, but not hard enough to actually cause damage. The fight starts and Maria comes out swinging. That's fine I'll just twirl a bit and throw away suddenly I'm spinning. Turns out she's done some boxing before. Like five years worth. Because I'm the smallest guy there, I usually spar with larger people. Think 5 plus inches and 30 plus pounds on me. Because of this, I've learned really fast that when I get rocked by a punch, I need to, for lack of a better term, drop aggro or else the fight's going to end. If I can't get them to back off, then they'll follow it up and I'll lose. So, I've conditioned my instincts to immediately counter if I get rocked it's an unconscious thing at this point. So here I am, rocked. I automatically throw my OS punch. It catches Maria straight in the face, and literally knocks her off her feet to the ground. As my buddy tells it, I started laughing because I know you got rocked. Then you knocked her the F out, author's note, she wasn't code, and I started laughing even harder. Anyways, after much apologies we head out. Her eye is swollen. Like good luck hiding that with mascara. Like no officer, I swear, she fell down the stairs swollen. She turns to me and chuckles and says ha, huh, so this was pretty much the worst first date ever, right? All I could do was do a double take and, a la Stewie Griffin, reply with a drawn out what? Epilogue, we didn't end up dating. Class on Monday was super awkward trying to explain what happened to her. Back in year 12, we had a biology class practical that involved a trip on this thing called Skyrail. It made a bunch of stops as it progressed up a mountain. We were to collect samples at each place and compare them to the final location atop the mountain. The final location was a 20 to 30 minute walk from the top of the Skyrail, through a town. The teachers walked us to the final spot, told us we were to be at the Skyrail at a certain time, and then went to the town to have coffee. When we were supposed to meet back at the Skyrail, everyone was there except for two out of the six guys from our cart. They were late because one of them, who I'll call Chris, because his name is Chris, went to buy a drink from a grocer's before we went back down. For reasons even unknown to Chris, he bought a two-liter iced coffee. We were about to go on the Skyrail to make the whole trip back without stopping, which is about a 40-minute trip. At this point, Chris was told that he couldn't take food or drinks onto the Skyrail. Without a second thought, he replied, no problem, and started drinking it without breath between words and gulps. He ended up downing it with impressive speed, barely holding up the line to the Skyrail. He finished the last drop as he set foot onto the little cart, which boards in a ski lift manner, constantly rotates without stopping. Immediately, as the cart freed itself from the guide rail, it started to sway. As soon as the cart swayed, Chris quietly stated with obvious fear, I shouldn't have drunk that milk. In unison, the other five of us in the now seemingly smaller cart replied, you're f -ed. What followed was supposed to be 40 minutes of five teenage boys trying to rock the cart in an attempt to free it from the cable. Instead, we had about 15 minutes of rocking during which a teary-eyed Chris nearly lost his lunch thrice before releasing all the rage of Hades in the form of stomach bile, consequently testing the optimistically named drainage system of the tiny sky cart. TLDR, don't chug milk before riding this thing. My friend, his parents, and I went out to eat for his dad's birthday a few months ago. My friend and I finished our food early, so his mom gave us $10 and a milk coupon to run to Meyer to pick up a shower mirror and a gallon of milk. This Meyer was unfamiliar to us, so we ended up wandering for a while to find our stuff. My friend told me he had to use the bathroom, so he ran off to find one while I continued looking for the items we needed. Ten minutes passed, and I was standing near the self-checkout waiting for him to show up. Finally, he walked up from behind me, looking a bit nervous. The first thing he said was, hey, so we're brothers, right? I responded, yeah, I guess so. Why? He looked me dead in the eyes and said, I said myself, dude. At first, I thought it was a joke, but then he pulled his hand from his pocket, revealing an S-covered $10 bill, coupon, and palm. He said, dude, I couldn't find the bathroom, and it just slipped out. When I asked what he did with the S, he looked around to make sure nobody else was listening and said, I threw it on the shelf and ran. This was the icing on the cake to my hysterical laughter dead center in Meyer. 
He left to go clean up while I delicately handled the Nana's covered side of the money, and we left to find his parents waiting outside, pretty upset that we were so late. When we came up short on change, his mom asked why we didn't use the coupon. He pulled it slightly out of his pocket and said, Uh, I don't know exactly how to tell you this, but... Before he could finish, she interrupted with an angry, You lost the coupon, didn't you? This is why I can't trust you to do things for me. He slid the Poose Lather coupon back into his pocket and muttered, Uh, yeah. I lost it, with relief. I couldn't contain my giggling the whole way home. He was actually terrified he'd end up on the news or something. TLDR, friend accidentally SN himself at Meyer and threw it on the shelf in panic. I don't want to tell this story, because it's so specific that it might give away who I am if any of my friends use Reddit. But, here goes anyways. I hope this doesn't blow up or I will probably have to delete this comment. We all went out to the typical college bars one night and got trashed. We being roommates and some friends of ours. There were some people from out of town staying over our place too that night. So after we all drank, everyone was drunk and fell asleep in their respective areas. Roommates in their rooms, and the guests on the couches and floors. The next morning, everybody is just up playing video games and chatting. One of the guys visiting from out of town, we'll call him Leroy, walks into the room and interrupts everybody, but very quietly. Let me preface this by saying that Leroy is a very tall guy. He's one of those guys who everyone knows as very friendly. Kind of a big friendly giant most might say. Back to the story, he walks in and says very nonchalantly, Uh guys, I think someone cooed in the shower. And this is why I stopped my counter-strike game with my roommate and I confusedly walk towards the restroom. I look down into the shower, and lo and behold, there is a stinking pile of S there. When I say pile of S, I mean pile of S. It's not like there's a few pieces of S like when you see a dog south in the park. I'm talking a pile of S's if someone slowly diuret into the shower. Now, the first thing that logically crossed my mind was, check what's wrong with the toilet. I check the toilet, flush it, and it all seems fine. Why would someone S into the toilet? How drunk must he she have been? These were my thoughts. So I scream running out of the bathroom, because the smell was really hitting my brain. That S was dank. I run out everyone, one by one, goes in to take a look at the shower extravaganza. Everyone comes out either laughing or gagging. Lots of oh my god s and holy ss. This is when we all go detective on this situation. We start deciphering who could have done this, considering nobody would admit to the crime. I take the role of lead detective and throw out some conjectures. Firstly, there are two bathrooms and three roommates who live there. Two people share the shower ship bathroom, and one person has his own. I come to the conclusion that it's most likely not the person who lives in his own room, considering he has his own bathroom, why would he shit like that in someone else's? Secondly, I live in one of the rooms, and I know I didn't do it. Thirdly, why would one of the guests shit in the shower? That's just plain impolite. So, we narrowed it down to the last piece of shit, pun intended, roommate. We'll call him John. John keeps denying it. We all accuse him and start laughing too. It basically turned into a witch hunt where we all accused and he continued to fend it off. But, John couldn't keep it up any longer. He doesn't admit it, but he might as well have. He says, fine. I'll clean it up. I didn't do it, but I will. This is when I yell out, bullsh. Why would you clean it up if you didn't do it? Everyone's bursting out laughing. Taking pictures of the shit before it gets cleaned. This one would go down in shit story. Oops, asterisk history. I realize he was probably kind of embarrassed, and I was probably being a bit of a douche about it. But, still. That's what you get for S into a shower when the toilet's right next to you. When I was for my parents' car trip from Edmonton to Vancouver and, being an idiot, my father declined to make reservations at any hotels. We get halfway and mom wants to stop for the night in Banff. Every single room is booked except the fancy smancy Banff Springs Fairmont Hotel. Which is so fucking beautiful it hurts the eyes. My dad, being a cheapskate, tried to convince my mom to sleep in the car, but she was not into that plan whatsoever. Not with two small children, both of whom were recovering from the sniffles. So we get a room and it's fine and dandy. Check in person mentions a pool and, being four, my eyes light up like a Christmas tree. Mom takes us up to the room to get changed because I will not be swayed. I will go swimming, cold or not. We get back in the elevator and return to the lobby, the pool is on the ground floor across the entrance. I take off running. Super psyched for swimming. And mom just sees the switch go off. I suddenly need to blow my nose. I stop. I look around. I'm wearing just my bathing suit so nothing to blow my nose in there. And even as she sprints forward towel in hand, 
I get down on all fours and grab two handfuls of their Persian rug and give her. The lobby is dead silent, the massive bus of Japanese tourists at the hotel check-in counter turn in horror. I get up and continue on my merry way to the pool and my mom is left with angry hotel employees looking at a puddle of my snot. Several months ago I whipped up the OL flashlight and turned the volume on my laptop up to a dull roar. I made the rookie mistake of thinking the house was empty. After all, I managed to walk downstairs, make myself some scrambled eggs for breakfast, take the dog out, and not hear a peep from anyone. I just naturally assumed I was home alone. After my 30 to 40 minutes long fab session, full of lube sloshing around and other questionable noises, I start the process of cleaning things up when I see my phone light up with a text from my mom. Gee, that's funny, I think to myself, it's 11am, why is mom texting me? She should be at work right now. Then it hit me. I heard the wheeling of the computer chair in the den downstairs. I take a big gulp. Ass cheeks puckering in with fear I open the text to the one line that will forever haunt me to the grave. Not to scare you honey, but I am home. Hugs and kisses, mom. She knew. She f knew. Paralyzed with fear at this point I just waited in my room till she left to do some errands. Maybe, just maybe, I thought, she didn't hear the ungodly noises coming from my room earlier and that the coast was clear. To test my logic I went downstairs and played the prawn at the same volume it had been playing earlier. It f echoed throughout the goddamn house. The way the acoustics in the ceiling worked I wouldn't have been surprised if she heard the occasional queef from the girl getting railed in the prawn. I couldn't look at my mom for weeks. The shame. Oh the f shame. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.